Welcome to another episode of UCRD Reviews. So today we have a really awesome, really huge mobile suit that comes in a very large box as well. This is the MSN-02 Perfect Zeong version anime. Now we all know the original Zeong, the legless wonder that Shar used at the end of Mobile Suit Gundam. This version is from Plamo Kyoshiro and uh, features legs, essentially. Um, it was also retconned into UC lore as a design for the Zeong that never got uh, put into development and was instead um, changed out for the version that we saw in Mobile Suit Gundam. I believe in Char's deleted affair, Char finally gets to use the perfect Zeong, but um, other than that, we didn't, we didn't really see it much. I know in Giren's Greed, there's a cutscene where you actually get to see it animated, which is pretty cool. But So we know we had the uh, MSIA, Zeong, without legs, there's the top of the box, and uh, there's kind of the side of the box. Let me move this back a bit. So you got some little GMs there. Let's take a look at what's on the bottom of the box. Oh, it's the Zeong. Really cool. And you can't really see the whole thing there, but there's his side profile. box is huge, so I apologize. But it is it is massive. Um, so yeah, we had the MSIA Zeong, and then we actually had the perfect Zeong in the Zeonography line. Now we have this Tamashi exclusive figure for the robot spirits. So I was really excited about this one. I predicted that. I told you guys it would do that. That's why I didn't buy the original Zeong. So I was really excited for this one. Obviously, when they announced it, I thought it would be pretty cool. And it uh, comes with a sword, too, which is awesome. So let's go ahead and take a look at it real quick. All right, so the first thing here, just like the other Perfect Gundam releases. We get this cool little illustration. It's pretty tall, so I'm kind of holding it at a weird angle so it fits in the frame. But it's a picture of the perfect Zeong fighting perfect Gundam, and he's got some little uh, weird-looking Zaku with the back end of a plane on its back, black Tristar Zaku, and a Goku cannon. Really cool. And this thing's pretty large. So, speaking of pretty large... There you go. Perfect Zeong. Zeong's already the size of a mobile suit. And then you add on some legs to it, and, and then it's twice as tall, if not if not even larger. So, really cool-looking figure. But it's not without its problems. Let me tell you a story here. I took this out of the box just to check it out before I did the review. The collar is in two pieces, a front piece and a back piece. I guess it's supposed to be glued down. And it was not, to my surprise. The head was on kind of like a, a neck piece. It actually moves back and forth and uh, it would just fall off. This would fall off and the head would go tumbling off. So I had to put two little dots of glue in the, uh, in the holes here and glue it together. Because I did that, I'm probably not going to remove the head. It's really, it's on there pretty stiff. Um, the head will come off. It's on a ball joint. And uh, for those of you that don't know, the Zeong's cockpit is in the head, and the head is a little escape craft if the body ever gets destroyed. And uh, so there's some features on it, which I will talk about, but we won't exactly take a look at, just because I'm not going to pull the head off. So let's keep going here. Articulation, head will go down about that far. Head will come up quite a bit. And uh, and that's with the collar there too. The collar will will move, and like I said, the head comes back and forth a little bit. Um, features on the head: it has a mega particle cannon that's effect part compatible. You have two little thrusters that are effect part compatible, and they will move back and forth. As you can see, two very pointy, very fragile antennas and you have the mono eye. So you can take the back of the head off and remove all of that. Fun fact, my part has a defect there. Lucky me! So back here there's a little little wheel and you can move 
the mono eye, you can actually move it so much that it will disappear, which is pretty cool. There's a reason for that, which we'll get into in a moment. Let me put all this back together. Not in a moment, it's when we check out the accessories, we'll take a look at it. So we have a defect here, we have a defect back there. Let's keep going. Chest will move forward about that far and back about that far, which is actually pretty good. Has four thrusters, um, two on the front, two on the back. They are both movable and effect part compatible. The cockpit door, even though the cockpit's up here, door is down here, you can actually remove it and replace it as a little hatch, an open hatch, which is pretty cool. You have uh, Mega Particle Cannons down here in the lower torso that are effect part compatible. Going around the back side, you have absolutely nothing. I don't know why I did that other than to look at it. Look at this giant skirt armor. Looks nice. Got all these markings and stuff on it. Way better than the original Xeong release. I'm so glad I didn't buy the original and just waited for this one. I'm going to move the head to the side. Arms will rotate quite a bit. Shoulder armor is just kind of clipped in there. They'll come up a good amount. You can't even see because the darn figure is so tall. It'll rotate on this joint here. It'll actually come off. There is a reason for that, which we'll, again we'll get into in the accessories. The elbow joint doesn't come up very far just because of the uh, design of the armor. You have double ball jointed hands with a swivel joint in the uh, lower palm and you have five ball jointed fingers on these particular hands which are pretty cool and then on each arm there is one piece with little notches on it and this piece can be removed there we go and it is stand compatible so when the arms are in their Saikomu extended mode you can actually stick them on a stand and the hands have mega particle cannons in each finger as well. And we'll get into how the effect parts work with that in a moment. Moving downward, actually before we before we do that, torso doesn't move much. Hey, look at that. Arm just came flying off of there. Wonderful. Um, so this is another problem with my figure. I think the socket is too large for this ball joint and it falls off if you look at it funny. And because it's on a rotating joint, it's really difficult to actually get it back into place. So I'm not going to mess with this too much. We are just going to do this one-armed here. Since we have it out, you'll see the arms kind of have a little bit of chest flex going on. A little bit, I guess. You have the 018 marker there. Going down to the legs, you have five effect part compatible ball jointed thrusters that move around a decent amount. They just end up like hitting each other. You have a uh, stand piece that, uh, funny enough, we'll, we'll look at it later. The stand's actually not this tall, so I don't know why there's a stand piece for perfect Xiong's legs. Um, the legs themselves on ratchet joints. They'll go out about that far. The skirt armor is not movable. It is removable, but it doesn't actually move around. And you'll get about that much distance on going forward, and that is your knee articulation. These legs are absolutely massive, so that's actually pretty good. Feet will come down about that far and come up about that far with limited toe articulation. It'll go side to side a bit. And you have one, two, three, four, five effect part compatible pieces or hard points down there. The legs are completely removable, which we'll get into in a moment, and they are a pain to attach, unfortunately. And you have um, quite a bit of movement going all around with this uh, ratchet joint. You have to ice swivel too. Hey, look, your armor comes off. Wasn't supposed to happen. 
So we'll get that back in there. We'll go into that in a minute. Zeong, you're getting ahead of me. So you do have thigh swivel, which a lot of figures don't have. And uh, I will <sighs> reattach the arm, and we will take a look at accessories. But you got a lot of cool, cool markings on the Zeong, so I really like this version, aside from all these uh, issues with quality control. So let's take a look at what it comes with. Alrighty, so I kind of got that arm on, so we'll take a look at what the Xiong comes with. In the meantime, you do get a little sticker sheet. These are markings for the uh, Plamo Kyosuro version of the Perfect Xiong. Pretty cool. You get a little bit of those. You do get some neat hands. You actually get fists, which is unusual for Robot Spirit's version anime release, as they don't typically come with fists. So you get those. You get two sword hands, because this Xeon comes with a giant sword, which is awesome. You get two hands that are posed like this. This actually reminds me of um, Gundam 0081's uh, opening cutscene, where the Xeong kind of has a hand posed like this and just fires a bunch of beams and destroys like five GMs and balls all at once. So you get the, they're supposed to be kind of like neutral hands, I think, but you get them like this. Unfortunately, there's no effect part compatibility within the fingers themselves, which we'll get into at the end when we, or at the end of this when we talk about effect parts. And you have two shooting hands. So those are your hands. There's no um, hand holder rack, unfortunately, which I guess isn't that big of a deal, but. Um, well, I thought I fixed the arm and it just came off. So we're going to do the rest of this one-armed as well. So you do have replacement antennas back here. And these are your other eyepieces. So let's go ahead and remove the Xeong's head here. So I'm going to kind of show you like this. This will actually attach up here and has the eye kind of coming up like that, like so. And then you can reverse it and have the eye, oops, you can just throw it. You can have the eye in a different position, like so. Helps if I have it in camera view. And then the other piece is basically the opposite. So it is also reversible and what you would do is hide the mono eye in the front of the head and put these in. So pretty interesting. And you can actually have the black piece and the mono eye hidden and kind of have the Xeong in an off position. I don't know if I mentioned that a minute ago. Um, okay, so let's get this tray up front here. So you get arm extensions. So these are like metal ones. Well, okay, we're just gonna leave that one there. Um, and the way these will work, here, this, I guess we'll make use of the arm here. It'll attach like that and attach like that. So these are pretty solid. These are not flexible. And these just kinda extend the arm a bit, which is pretty cool. And then you get two flexible ones. So these cables you can bend around as much as you want and kind of do whatever with them. They're pretty bendy. And then you get two longer cables that actually, let me take this off of the arm. Oops, that's not supposed to come off. There we go. So this attaches to the ball joint in the arm. I'm not going to actually move it around a whole lot, but uh, this attaches to the hand, which I think is only a feature in Plamo Kyoshiro where the hands are Saikomu as well. But that is what, you get two of these, that's what those do. And then this little adapter piece, if I can get it out of here, um, attaches here, and you can use the chain from the Gundam hammer 
Okay, well, let's just pretend it attaches. You can use the chain from the Gundam hammer to uh, connect to the other side and actually connect to the hand. So, pretty cool. I'm not going to show it because use your imagination, kids. You also get a stand, which stand kind of sucks. Um, it'll go on like that. It can spin. You remove this piece and reattach it at whatever angle you want, but this piece often comes apart because it's not on there very well. And unfortunately, this is the only way to get the Xeong on a stand. It doesn't have a traditional Tamashi stand connection, which is really unfortunate. So you get this little thing. Um, what else? You can remove the skirt armor panel and you can replace it with this one that has a little sword holder and it just it's a direct replacement kind of it just goes in there we can take a look at this big old broad sword that it comes with obviously Shar didn't have this when he was fighting Amuro but it'll just kind of attach right in there oh hang on okay and we're back I have a little cool little Totoro cuckoo clock that I got from Japan that uh, was going off. So, moving forward, we have, uh, let's let's rip the Xeong's, the perfect Xeong's legs off real quick. So they just pull straight off. So this is how they connect. Um, this poor Xeong is looking pretty messed up. So, on the bottom there, you can actually take this piece and attach it to the bottom of the Xeong. There's six effect part compatibility points on these two big old thrusters and then you have fold out landing gear which is really cool. So the feet on the back two move. I think this one's just a fixed piece. So it attaches pretty easily and uh, just kind of sits like that which is pretty neat these are ball jointed and I'm um, glad glad they included this now that I have the legs removed we're going to show some other pieces if I can get the uh, armor panels off did it on accident a little bit ago so obviously this is going to be the same for both legs I'm just going to show one so once you remove the panels you have a couple components and we're going to grab, you get two of these with the red on this side and you get two of these with the red on the opposite side. These pieces will attach to either side. You want the red facing forward. So we'll do it to this other side too. There we go. And then you have these. So there's two with red on it and you have two without. Red goes in the front, attaches straight away, and the one without the red goes on the back. So when this Perfect Xeong's line art came out, one leg didn't have, it was actually this leg, didn't have the armor on it, had these kind of components on it, which is pretty cool. So it has pieces where you can do it to both legs, and um, make it look like the line art. This uh, arm piece can be removed and you get again two of these. These are the uh, armorless arm pieces so it'll connect up into the arm there and then you attach that there. Actually allows for a little more articulation because of the lack of armor and same thing on the line art on this arm that is not here the armor was not on there so you can replicate that and again it comes with two of them. Now let's get into effect parts. Alright so you get a couple head effect parts up here if I can get them out. So you get one straight beam that'll attach to the mouth on the head and one with an angled 
uh, peg to kind of simulate the head firing downward at the Gundam during the final battle, which is pretty cool. You get eight of these little tiny thruster effects. These can go in various places, like the uh, thruster right here, or it can go in any of the other ones that I mentioned earlier that are effect part compatible. You get four of these kind of medium-sized ones, and same thing, they can go in all the same places, and these larger ones are a two-piece, or a three-piece, they actually have this unfortunate seam going down the middle, and the tip of it is also um, molded, looks like it's molded separately, but these will attach, you get five of these, so these mainly are made to attach to these five thrusters down here, but again, you can put them wherever you want. And the disappointing ones, these big, bulbous, large ones, you get two of them, kind of molded the same as the littler ones. Um, I think it's, is it this one? So this one actually attaches pretty well, but I have a good old quality control issue. This one doesn't attach at all. Like it, the peg is too small, and it doesn't really go anywhere. And it's too big to fit in there. So this one's useless, and since it looks stupid with just one, that means they're both useless. Yay! Quality control issues. You get two mega particle effects. These are for the uh, ones in the torso, and they'll just attach pretty easily. They look good. Nothing crazy. And finally, you get the ones for the hands. They're both identical. Let me find... Is it this one? So the hand actually just kind of shoves itself in there. These actually look really, really good. I like these effects. So pretty cool. They're in there. Pretty snug. This one's a little bit bent, but a little bit of heat can fix that. I mean, why not? We have to fix so much else on this figure. Why not do that too? So, now that we're through all that and through all these quality control issues, let's take a look at a comparison. So if this is what Shar had in the one-year war, he would have had a clear advantage. Um, <laughs> these are side-by-side. Side. As you can see, the Gundam doesn't even come up all the way to its leg, or the, the top of its leg. Uh, Perfect Xeong is huge. I mean, it's, it's very, very very large. You know, the Gundam's not even as tall as the regular Xeong, and you factor in the legs, and it's just massive. So, big figure. Make sure you have room to display this one. But it looks fantastic. And even the Gundam Mark V, the KA Signature version, that is significantly taller than a lot of my version anime figures, is still dwarfed quite a bit by the perfect Xeong, so just to give you an idea of scale, that is it. So at just over $145, the perfect Xeong is expensive and um, would be very worth it if it wasn't for all the quality control issues. And that's $145 before shipping and everything. Um, Mine just had too many problems. I mean, it was it was like perfect Gundam all over again. The arm falls off. The head part was all messed up. There's quality control issues on parts of the head. The big thruster wouldn't connect to anything. I mean, it was just like one after another. It just wouldn't end. And uh, it really made me think like they didn't put a whole lot of effort into this Plamo Kyoshiro stuff. You know, it could have been really, really nice, but... There you go, you can see the arm's probably about to go. Um, it looks really, really nice, but, you know, it's just not what I was expecting for the amount of money I spent, which is unfortunate. Um, this is probably the end of the Plamo Kyoshiro stuff. I don't, I don't foresee them making anything else from here. Um, and like I said, I, I, I like that it's convertible into the regular Xeong, and it's painted nice, it looks great, 
you know, the perfect Xeon looks very menacing, but I mean, it just had way too many problems. Um, so take it, take it or leave it. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it is. Let me know in the comments how your perfect Xeon was, if it was, uh, riddled with quality control issues like mine, or if it was closer to perfect. And, uh, thank you for watching the review. I, uh, hopefully I'll be getting more reviews out. Everything got delayed. My bitter Zaku, the ground Gundams, even this one to some degree all got delayed. And, um, and I just got the bitter Zakus yesterday, so hopefully I'll get them reviewed and out as well. And uh, looking forward to what's coming down the pipeline. And so what do y'all think about Gundam Seed being the next version anime? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.